All right, we're going to uh, reclock the uh, cam gear here, the cam sprocket actually. Um, what it is, I didn't like its position. I previously have moved it back, retarded the cam timing one tooth. Um, Check the compression, it was 150 pounds, uh, pretty much across all cylinders. Um, I should have checked it before I moved it. Um, now what I want to do is I want to put it back where it was, uh, check it again. Um, it didn't fix the backfiring issue. Um, so I want to put it back where it was. If the compression goes up, awesome. Uh, it's on position one right now. Uh, I want to step it back to where it was. There's 40 teeth on this cam gear that equates to 9 degrees. So basically I retarded the cam timing 9 degrees. I'm going to put it back where it was and then from going from position 1 to position 2 uh, on the pin, you know, the different holes, that advances at 4 degrees. Going from 2 to 3 advances at another 4 degrees. So that would be 8 degrees if I went all the way to 3. Um, by that point you might as well move it uh, a whole tooth but if if it's closer retarding at nine I could actually then move it to position two and that would equivalent you know equate to uh, five degrees of retarded timing um, you know they say there's no real way to retard it once you get back to position one well if you retard it a whole tooth nine degrees and then move it position two or three you'd get either five degrees or one degree uh, retarded and uh, I'm a hundred degrees retarded so anyway, let's uh, rotate it around, get it close to uh, top dead center here. We'll sight down in there. Oh, a little past. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up. Got my head in the way pretty much, but um, if you have to roll it back, roll it back too far and then go again or the wrong side of the chain is going to be uh, loose. So, it's going to move a little bit when I uh, pop it loose, but uh, we'll still be able to move it around just a little bit. So, I'm going to put a screwdriver in the uh, sprocket hole there to uh, hold that. Alright, that didn't move much at all, but let's... Uh, Let's double check that. And we want to make sure that uh, by sticking it on top dead center, I've got a reference point. So, you know, if, if something happens, I forget to do something, I can start back over and put it back on top dead center. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here with a scribe. And since this isn't an initial installation, I would have to run it around forever to find the shiny link um, and I'd still not be able to see the shiny link on the crank to tell if I'm X number of uh, links away. Uh, you'd have to look that up. I don't remember exactly what the links are. So anyway, this is the dot for number one. Corresponds directly with the tooth there. So I'm going to put an X on that link there um, so that I can reference so I know that that dot's got to move to the next hole, which will be the recessed one, not the, this one's on the outside, this one's on the inside. I'm going to move that dot to point here at the inside. Um, before we get too carried away here, <laughs> there's a lot of these out there. I made a couple of them, um, but basically you need to, uh, uh, it won't go in with the with the fuel thing on there, maybe some of the other ones will. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the uh, fuel eccentric off. All that does, it doesn't matter what position it is, it just has to go move around to uh, um, make the fuel pump operate. And oil all over everything is uh, makes it hard to grab stuff. Okay, that's off. So now we can put this in. As you see, I drilled a hole in it, put a a uh, rope on it, so that I can get it back out of there.
Okay, so that's holding the chain. So now what I need to do is get my crescent wrench. And with the crescent wrench, we can then grab the, uh, the cam in the center here, if that's even in the picture, and move it there if need be. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I got my X, got my hole. Now there's a, a pin here. It's in plug in the hole, first hole here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to reposition the sprocket in the chain. And then I have to rotate the cam to line back up with that hole. Um, so we got it off. Now, all I did, you can see, maybe you can see that there. I just made a bump in it here. So that way when I pick it up, I don't have to take the sprocket all the way out. All I got to do is just walk that one link around. And now I need to take the cam and rotate the cam until that hole lines up with the pin. Oh, okay. Um, I ran the uh, second compression test. Uh, Moving it back that one tooth, the nine degrees, back to where it was. Um, I ended up going from 150 uh, ish to uh, 160, 165 ish. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move that forward the four degrees by switching it from one to two. I haven't done it before, so why not? Um, just to see what it does. Um, not many people are willing to just play with their cars for the uh, sake of education so I guess I'll uh, do it anyway you can also see when I ran the compression test I stuck this uh, screwdriver in here because um, you want the throttle open but you don't want to keep you know opening and closing it squirting fuel in there every time so I've got that sitting in there I'm just gonna leave it in there since I'm gonna do another compression test as soon as uh, I'm done here I put it back on top dead center going to uh, pop this uh, loose again. I never cranked it tight before so uh, it's not uh, not really an issue. Or, uh, I didn't have to fight with it as hard as I did last time. So since I have this sitting here we'll uh, speed things up just a little bit there. Kind of a pain to try to get that out. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, we can stick our block down in here. Don't want to forget that or you're going to be tearing the whole front end of the engine apart. Okay, basically, I'm going to do the same thing as before. Uh, I'm going to take the scribe and I'm going to mark where that number one tooth is. And then I'm going to pop it off and I'm going to walk it around until... Uh, Until I get the number two hole sitting right where the number one is. Now the number one is in between here. Um, so I'm going to put just a couple of marks in there, try to get it bright enough that I can see it. And, and true, after you've done this several times, you're going to end up with multiple links that have scratches in them. Uh, as long as you don't do it enough that you're <laughs> you start running into the same marks again, uh, it's not really an issue. And I got so many lights on here trying to get it bright enough for the video that uh, I'm having trouble seeing with the glare on the glasses. Okay, so there it is. I need to move that over to there. Now it's only going to be a four degree difference, so I shouldn't have to move the uh, uh, the cam much. But I probably will have to move it some. Well, I will have to move it. I'll have to move it four degrees. Okay, so let's pop that off again. I'm just kind of kind of move it oh hey it looks like I can move it almost all of it in one fell swoop no nope, two just kind of walking it around there that blocks in there so I don't have to worry about uh, the chain dropping out okay so I have the number two hole lined up with the mark I left and 
cam needs to go clockwise just a little bit. I had it lined up vertically well enough to uh, to uh, get it to start so once I uh, gave a little twist so okay so we are now four degrees advanced uh, moving now those positions are in there more for uh, accounting for stretch timing chains um that's their primary purpose not not so much for tuning valve timing it's to compensate for retarded valve timing when your chain stretches but that's one of those racing tricks or whatever that's okay it's in that how to hot ride your Datsun um, now, of course, now when they do it, they don't just do it arbitrarily. They uh, they go through and degree the camshaft with dial indicators and blah 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 and top dead center and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they do that to get their cam timing exactly where they want it. Um, but they're also using uh, well, I guess they're probably using triple S cams. This is an L20. Supposedly it has that same grind on it to start with. I don't know what all the degrees mean and all that kind of stuff. I really don't care. Um, I need my... Uh, I think I'll put a break in it here and do the uh, compression just separate.